and welcome to Predictive Engineering. This is George Laird. I'm the Principal Engineer at Predictive Engineering, and we're going to talk about the NASA 5020A requirements for threat assessments. We've done a lot of bolt analysis through the years, and it's classically just the usual beam element with rigid links, and works really well. It's hard to argue with success, but the NASA spec is a different beast. It really wants you to use six DOF springs, and I'll explain why because of the the way you want to calculate loads through it. And of course, uh, fasteners love shear pins with the spec. I'll say that going right out of the gate. If you think you're going to be involved with the NASA 5020A, start looking at shear pins. And also, preload is not necessarily your friend. We're accustomed to using the maximum preload. That's not going to help you a lot on the spec. What we're looking at here is, this is my short summary, base flight hardware. You got to get it right out of the gate because you're not sending up somebody to fix a loose joint. And on the right, that shows you where the fasteners, you want to stay where the curves don't meet. That means you don't have joint separation. And it seems sort of obvious if you look at it, you have the load increasing the bolt preload, but it was really useful to plot this out and think about it. Gave, gave us a lot of good insight, even after years of working with bolted joints. It gives you why a fatigue works so well, you don't get the oscillation and so on and so forth. So there's your spec. Keep it simple. <laughs> Embrace a spreadsheet. Start running trial calcs. Get brewing out. Start looking at bolt fitting setup for bearing loads. But it's all there. It just takes a little time to read. And they give you some very basic formulas to go through it. But it assumes you, you know, well, you understand fasteners. It takes some time. One of the things that you run into on bolt preload is that they, unless you have a laboratory and have measurements, they're going to require a huge variation between min and max bolt preload and a preload variation of 35%. And unless you have really tight data, you got to go with this variation, and that can cause downstream issues with getting things set up. We ended up to, to really get everything aligned on it for the bolt factor, we just built a model. Yes, there's hand calcs, and they, they sort of work out to 0.25%, but it was really gratifying to build a model and explore this, and then come back and say, yeah, it's 25% on the bolt factor. And the bolt factor determines how much load is going to get transferred into the bolt. So it, it, oh, it all ties in together quite nicely, but it takes time. So once you have that baseline information worked out, then you can go ahead and crank to the numbers for the margin of safety on it. And then you also have bearing loads for the shear pins. And most shear pins are potted, of course, keep them in place. And so we actually did a full 3D model. Even though Brune was nicely done, the margin was sort of tight. So we just did a 3D model on LS Dynas with the nonlinear properties of the potting com compound and full shear load pulled in off the FDA model. And our biggest takeaway was you really got to dump everything out from the FDA model because you're going to be rerunning, of course, different scenarios. So we had an API script that dumped it all in the spreadsheet, and we could modify things on the spreadsheet to get there. And you'll find out that, that really on the FDA side, you can do a sensitivity study, and you'll find out where the diameter of the pin is not that critical once you get to a certain limit. And then you start running through everything. So. That's about it in a nutshell. If you have any questions, you can take a look at our, our website, Predictive Engineering. You can also find us there. We're a group of about 30 engineers, and so we have a small machine shop, rapid prototyping. We can do start to finish, but we're small. So you're going to get to know the engineer, and there is going to be technology transfer from the experienced team back to you. It's one of the nice advantages of working with us. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.